I consistently make $500 a week with options. In my shorts, I show a screenshot of this and I begin a ridiculous amount of comments asking how I do it. I'll go over the fundamentals of the main strategy I use to consistently generate weekly option income. This option income strategy has given me the privilege to purchase a house at the age of 25 in New York City. This strategy can be an excellent way to generate income while minimizing the downside risk in your portfolio. Stick around to the end as I break down the intricacies of this strategy. We'll be talking about income generation, risk management, potential returns, and other important factors. If you do enjoy the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. It really helps for the algorithm. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all things money investing. The main strategy I use to generate $500 a week is the wheel strategy and the iron condor strategy. In this video, I'll go over the wheel strategy. In another video, I'll go over the iron condor strategy. I collateralize about $13,000 a week. Depending on the risk, the income differs. Wheeling is a very popular strategy and by no means I'm not the pioneer of it. Even though I do have a job in finance, I do not use options on a daily basis in my job. I actually learned how to wheel by watching YouTube videos similar to what you're doing. This strategy could be an excellent way to generate income while managing the risk in your portfolio. This will be a two part series. First part is this video and I'll be describing the whole process of the strategy. The second part will be another video where I'll go over the little intricacies of each step. First, let's go over some basic option language. A strike price is a price at which the put or call can be exercised. The expiration date of an option is the last day the options contract is valid. A put option grants the right to the owner to sell some of the amount of the underlying security at a specific price, the strike price, on or before the option expires. A call option is a contract that gives the buyer the right but not the obligation to buy a certain quantity of the underlying asset at the strike price until its expiration date. Assignment happens when someone who is short a call or put is forced to sell in the case of a call or buy in the case of a put the underlying stock. In other words, for anyone short an option, there's someone out there on the long side who could exercise. First part of the strategy is to pick a stock you believe in. Something you don't mind holding. Any stock with strong fundamentals, stable price trends, and adequate liquidity. Next, we will be selling a put. You want to have enough cash to buy 100 shares of that stock per contract. So if the stock is $50, you'll need $5,000 to do this strategy for one contract. If the stock is 400, you will need $40,000 to do the strategy for one contract. This is the collateral you will need to buy the stock in case your option gets assigned. You place an order to sell a put and in return you get premium for the contract. There are two outcomes. First outcome, when the option expires above the strike price, you will get the premium and the cash you collateralize will be returned. If this happens, just sell another cash covered put. Outcome two, when the option expires and the market price is under the strike price, you will be signed to buy 100 shares per contract at the strike price. No matter if you get assigned or not, you will keep the premium you sold the contract for. You could also get assigned whenever during the life of the contract. The term assigned means that you use your collateral to buy the underlying asset. If you do not mind owning the shares, this is great. If you were going to buy the shares at the strike price a week ago and you got assigned, then you basically just got paid to buy the shares at the price you wanted it at. Congratulations, you are the proud owner of the underlying asset. Phase two of the strategy is to now sell a call above the average price of your shares. So when your option gets assigned, you gain the premium and the difference of the strike price and the average cost. If your underlying asset does not have a stable price trend, then this could be problematic. You could be holding your shares forever. After you place an order to sell a call and take your sweet premium from the buyer for selling the contract, there are two outcomes. Outcome one, when the option expires below the strike price, you'll keep your premium and you'll get your collateral shares back. If this happens, you just sell another covered call. Outcome number two, when the option expires and the market price is above the strike price, you'll be assigned to sell 100 shares per contract at the strike price. Similar to puts, if you do not mind selling the shares, this is great. You got paid a premium to sell the shares at a profit. Two income sources. Now with all this extra money you made, you start the process again. During this cycle of the strategy, you make three income sources. One, selling the put premium. Two, selling the call premium. Three, the difference between the average cost per share and the strike price when selling the call. There we go. That is the whole process of the wheel strategy. Of course, there's skill behind performing the strategy. In my next video, I'll go through the guidelines and what I'm thinking. I don't think I'll do example on the strategy at the moment because I do believe the market's gonna crash. I'll be taking a break from wheeling. Stay tuned for my next video where I go over the Greeks, 
what the strike price is, what to look for when selling a call on a put, how long a contract should be, and more. If you do appreciate all the hard work I put into making this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching. See you in the next video and happy investing.